Today's show is pre recorded. Y'all know what time it is. Y'all don't know y'all better act on that. Hat on, hat on, suit on, suit on. Looking like the trap dog. Giving them all on. Just like a million bucks, but things in its cup. Mm-hmm. Now tell me who could it be but Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. Everybody out there listening to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Oh, oh, oh. to the voice come on dig me now <laughs> one and only steve harvey got a radio show man oh man oh man it symbolizes just one thing to me man it's just a constant reminder of exactly how good god has been to me over the years and i thank him for it too because i realize every day that i wake up that i would be nothing without him that everything i am that's any good in me i owe to him now have i made some mistakes along the way yep mm-hmm bunches bunches and bunches and will i continue to make mistakes along the way yep not as many hopefully as i have in the past because a lot of stuff i know better now but you're still going to make mistakes now you know hopefully i've limited the amount of intentional errors in my life. I've wiped quite a few of those out. But from time to time, because we're human, we're going to make a mistake every now and then. The trick with it is, y'all, is not to let the devil deceive you into thinking that once you make that mistake, that that's it. You can't do it. You've fallen off the wagon. You can't reboard it. That's the biggest trick that he uses. He makes you think that if you keep stumbling that you can't run the race. Um, It kind of reminds me of a marathon runner. From time to time, I watch him on TV. And you'll see some people who uh, finish the race, you know, in a a nice uh, pace. You see people finish the race sprinting towards the finish line. But every now and then, you'll watch a marathon and you'll see a runner And the runner is in really, really bad shape. The key is they finish the race. See, you don't get disqualified in the marathon because you stumble. You don't they don't they don't take your opportunity to finish the race because you keep falling. That's not the key. The key is finishing. And a lot of times what what the devil does is he makes you think that because you keep stumbling, because you're swaying from side to side, that, you know, you out the race. Well, that's not the case. And see, and in this thing called life, let me help you understand something. Everybody falls. Nobody sprints to the tape in this one. Nobody just runs free and clear. There are some people running faster than you and all like this. And some people going to get to the end before you let them go ahead. And when the end come, the end come. I ain't in a rush to get to the end. 
But in this race, though, when you're stumbling and you're falling, it's a part of it. No one gets through this race without stumbling and falling, swaying from side to side. So don't let the uh, the enemy deceive you into thinking that it's over. I, I, I try to be encouraging to people because I don't want people to get stuck on this thing, you know, and my walk is very different from a lot of people's walks. And then I know a lot of people who walk in faith the way I'm walking in faith. But my, my thing in the morning is just to remind those that is not a perfect walk, man, that is not something that's set up where you're going to be skipping through life scot-free without any pitfalls. You know, I keep saying it over and over and over again, because like I said, when I was in D.C., um, my boy Hondo said this to me and it just kind of stuck with me that the road to construct the road to success is always under construction. You have to figure and count on the setbacks and the pitfalls. But it's those people that that uh, that that uh, that fight through will be the victors in the end. You cannot give up, man. Stop going somewhere and sitting down every time something goes down. It's going to go down. It's a part of it. It's going to happen. It's going to occur. There are going to be setbacks. If you go and sit down every time there's a setback, that's not how this works. It is designed that way. If success were easy, everybody would be successful. But success is just reserved for those who are willing to fight through, who refuse to settle for mediocrity who wants something more. Now, don't get me wrong. Success is defined by each individual. So what I may consider to be successful, you may not consider that. You know, what Bill Gates considers successful, I might not consider. What what Michael Jordan considers successful, I might not consider. What you consider successful, your boss might not consider. You have to define what that is for yourself. It may not be monetary at all. You know, your level of success could be tied up in community service. It could be tied up in family. It could be tied up in the church. Your level of success could be tied up in the boys clubs. It could be any number of things. Whatever your level of success is, you have to determine what that is. You And the best way to determine that is to get in touch with your maker who created you to find out what your mission and your purpose is so he can put you on track. I just had this conversation with my son and we were talking about getting on the path that God has set up for you. So many times we find ourselves fighting through life because of so much uncertainty, because we have no idea where we're headed. It's like uh, one of my, um, sayings that I have at my mentoring camp for boys is, is that a boy without a male role model is like an explorer without a map. See, if you don't have a map laid out in front of you of where you're going, when you wake up every day, that pretty much explains the feeling of confusion, the lackadaisical attitude, the the lack of purpose, the not understanding your mission, because you don't have not gotten in touch with your creator to find out exactly what your path in life is. What are you supposed to be doing? The moment you can identify that is the moment that you get started waking up with purpose, with the sense of direction, when you kill the sense of, I don't know what's next or what to do. Now, there's going to be some confusing moments no matter what happens. There's going to be some uncertainty, but at least you'll know where you're going. So if you're tired of waking up feeling lost, abandoned, confused, don't know what to do, don't know what you're supposed to be doing, refer back to your maker. Because when he created you, he had a plan for you. When he created you, he had a path for you. Now, we've made some decisions to get off of both of those, the mission and the path, but God can get you right back on track. Do that today. Ask him what you're supposed to be doing. And listen, God has all the answers if you form the relationship, okay? You're listening 
to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time again. It's time to be grateful. It's time to wake up, give honor and thanks to the Almighty for letting you see another day. Man, oh man, oh man, God is good. You know something, y'all? Hmm. I, 2024 is starting off rather well for me. And I just want you to know why. Because okay. you know what? I've learned so much. It is? Every year I live, I learn more and more and more and more. And I want all y'all to put this in your head. What God has for you, mm -hmm. there is not a living soul that can stop that from happening. Amen. What God made you to be, you are who you are because God willed it so. You in good hands. If you are a person who believes in God, you are in good hands. And don't worry about what they out there saying. Because they have nothing else to do. <laughs> man, oh man, oh man. Ain't got nothing else to do. Steve Harvey Morning Show, y'all. <laughs> Shirley Strawberry, Carla Pharrell, Mississippi Monica. Junior, government name is Kill Spates. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, the legend that is Nephew Tommy yeah. Junior. It's Yo. a new year. What's on your mind? You know, Unc, man, I feel for some people, man, because nine days in, they already quit on their dream, man. Nine days in. Mm. Friend of mine and called up, said, man, I can't do it. I said, what's wrong, man? He said, man, I ain't gonna be able to get this CDL license. So now he didn't quit on the CDL dream. See, all he had to do was just go down to school, go get his license, and he can go drive trucks. But I found out he ain't got no driver license. So damn, he had to give it up. He ain't got no regular license. What? You know, yeah. It's steps to success. <laughs> I think that's he what everybody has to understand. There's steps to success. And a lot of the steps you're going to take is going to be difficult. You know what, man? I was listening to a guy uh, early, early this morning on one of the motivational feeds. And he says that whenever he makes a plan to do something great with his wife or anybody, when he do some do something great, he expects an attack to come. Because he says whenever you in agreement with your spouse or your mate or, or you trying to accomplish something wonderful in your life expect an attack to come because the opposition don't want to see it happen for you hmm. but what throws people off is we make these new year's resolutions we make these claims and then when the attack come we think that's the final blow no it comes with the process of becoming successful now the attack may come in the form of a person that you trusted or loved but it also can just come in the form of a test okay like your boy junior he yeah. wanted to get his cdl license but he gave up but he got he got to go get his regular license first yeah because yeah. you can't even give it a truck to drive without the damn regular license so all he got to do is go get the license but he can let that stop him Man, come on. <laughs> come on, dog. Come on. All right. We, we can do better than this. <laughs> Don't give up. Don't give up. That is the message coming up at 32 minutes after the hour. We will hear from the nephew as he runs that prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for the nephew to run that prank back. What you got for us, Neff? Shirley, I got Can You Hear Me Now? Can You Hear Me Now? All right. Hello. Yeah, <laughs> doing a little sign language down at the church. Can you hear me now? Cat dog, if you would. Hello? I'm trying to speak to Sister Lauren, please. Speaking. Uh, Sister Lauren, this is Brother Davis from the church. I don't know if you know me. You might know me when you see me, but I don't know if you just know me because we don't really interact that much at the church, but I wanted to give you a call. We got a, a bit of a problem going on. Okay. Okay, you got, you got do you have a minute to talk? Well, apparently so, huh? All right. Now, how, how long have you been doing the, uh, the sign? You in the, you know, you in the ministry where you do the sign language for the church. And, um, you know, I, I noticed you up there at least two Sundays out of, uh, mm -hmm. out of the month. You've been doing it quite a while. Am I right? So, y yes, I've been doing it for over 10 years, but I'm a little bit confused as to why you're calling about this. I'm, I'm, I'm just a little bit confused. 
I don't know who you are. You say that I, if I see your face, I may know you, but I, oh, what, what does this have to do with anything of how long okay. I've been doing sign language? I know okay, sign language. So, I've been doing it for years. So how, how may I help you with this? Do you want to okay, learn sign so, language? No, no, I'm not trying to learn any sign language. Do you do you know Miss, uh, everybody call her Miss Myrtle. Do you know Miss Myrtle? Uh, yeah, I sure do. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Miss Myrtle, that's 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 one of my aunties right there. Miss Myrtle is. Okay, All right. and, and, and she and, gave and, you my number to call me. I'm. I, what What do you need from me? Did she give you? No, my no, number? no, that's what I'm getting at. So, so you know, you know my, you know my aunt is, is deaf. You know she's hearing okay. impaired. You know that, right? Okay. Yes. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh -huh. So, so here's a problem. A A Myrtle is telling us that you're not doing the sign language right doing the service and like you missing some things in the scripture or something. No, 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 that's incorrect. I've been doing this for a very long time and I know what I'm doing. So how okay. do you, so she told you I, to call me to tell me that I'm not doing the sign language correctly. That's I, I, really I, funny. Let, uh -huh, let me say, let me say this to you. Let me say, I, I don't want us to get off on the wrong foot. Let me just say this to you. Once my, once my murder told us what was going on, you know, we then, went to one of the deacons and asked him, you know, is there a way we can uh, have a meeting, you know, with, with, with Sister Lawrence so we can try to get this taken care of and, and talk okay. about it. He said, well, okay. won't you just, won't you just call and y'all can just work it out. And, and that's how I'm, I'm, I'm calling you now. I'm, okay. I, I hope, I don't know if you're at work or whatever. I apologize, but I'm just trying to get to the bottom of it. Now, let me go and say this. If my ain't murder say that you ain't signing right, then my ain't ain't lying. That mean your ass, excuse me. That mean you ain't signing right. Really? So the pastor couldn't come to me, but he, but you figured you would just call me and tell me that your auntie says that I'm doing it incorrectly. That doesn't make sense to me. How did she tell you that? Did she sign it to you? She signed language to her daughter. My, my, listen. You ain't got to worry about who she's signing to. What you need to worry about is getting your. Sh getting your stuff together, all right, and learning how to do this the correct way so that my auntie can get, you know, my auntie needs to be getting the word like everybody else getting the word, but she not getting it because you, the word's getting lost in your hands. All I'm hearing is your voice is getting very loud, and you need to match my tone, young man. Okay, let's just start with that. What you Don't mean, match your, ma oh, oh, oh. Match match your tone, tone, young man? Yes. What is that? Match my tone because you're getting very loud, and I can't hear through all of that. All right. Okay. So I'm okay. Well, let me, let me, I am I'm gonna say to this situation. You called my phone, correct? You have a problem that you're discussing with me, but you're getting more angry than anything else. How am I going to resolve this problem? I am trying to be as cordial. The way as you I resolve this problem is carry your ass back to sign school so you can learn what you need to, so my auntie can get the word. My auntie can't you're get the gospel that. because you're messing it up. God anointed me to do sign language at that church, and I've been doing it for a long time, and I will continue to do so. So don't call my phone telling me that I'm not doing something right. You know but what? But do God oh, know that you're not doing it right? Do God know that? Does God know that my ain't Myrtle not God getting the word because of you? Lord's name, young man, Jesus, please give me the strength to continue on with this conversation. But you know what, Lord? I'm going to be right back. Little m let me tell you your something don't you ever call my mother freaking phone talking about i ain't doing something man if i see you in the street this can i have is gonna go upside your damn head did i make myself clear i cannot believe you talking to me like this oh now you want to be calm now you're calm now you match my tone i have engaged. I, I can't time. believe you just got you talking to me like that are we done here so you think it's cool for you to tell the lord I'll be right back. Thank you, Lord. Hey, I needed a moment. I'm you human, right? We've been on this phone this long. You've been all screaming at me. I told you to match my tone. Match my tone. I am matching your tone. No. Can I, I say, I can, I, can I give you something <laughs> else in this tone? Do you mind if I say something in this tone? You're going to hear a click and a die real quick. Go ahead. See what you have to say. I just want to tell you in this tone that your friend, Vonda Taylor, got me to prank phone call you. I am nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show in your tone. Jesus. Oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> you have me on the break. Vonda? <laughs> Vonda Taylor. Vonda Taylor. <laughs> Tommy, you better not put this on the radio. You better not put this on the radio. Vonda, I'm a <laughs> 
call you in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Radio. I'm not playing any games, Tommy. I think it's funny, but it's saying this is my job here. Listen, everything is fine. How you had me going there? I had to tell Jesus, give me a minute, because you was about to bring my pressure up. Oh, Lord have mercy. I don't even want to hear this, but I will be calling Bonda because I have some words for her. Oh, Lord, Lord, Father, Lord, Father, please forgive me. Oh. Oh, Lord. Okay, get, okay, you got you to gotta do this for me in my tone, in my tone. In Tell me in your tone, what is the baddest radio show in the land, in your tone? The Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> in my tone. In my tone. <laughs> and there you have it. No need for an applause or anything. Jacksonville, Florida, the nephew come mm -hmm. to town. I got five shows down there, two Friday, two Saturday, one on Sunday. Nephew, MLK Weekend, Jacksonville, Florida, Comedy Zone. All right. All right, nephew, thank you. Coming up next, it is Ask the CLO with our Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey in the building right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, Jonathan Majors breaks his silence on the guilty verdict. Uh, Oprah Winfrey says there are no issues between her and Taraji. Uh, and comedian Joe Coy, the, um, the comedian who hosted the Golden Globes Award, Golden Globe Awards. Well, mm -hmm. he's responding to the backlash he received. We'll talk about all of these stories at the top of the hour. But right now, it is time to ask the CLO, Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey. Karen in Tulsa writes, my husband and I have a lot of phone sex when he's traveling. Last week, he called and woke me up at 3 a.m. And I didn't know that our five-year-old had snuck into my bed until my hubby saw her tiny <laughs> little face on my phone. I told her it was just a game. She told my mom about the game. I can't punish her. Uh, what do we do? Nothing. Mm. <laughs> Nothing. What, what you going to do? What can you do? baby grown now. To you know. She didn't told your mama. Your mama know what's happening. So what? what why, let, let me ask y'all something. Why y'all nowadays always feel like you guys feel like you gotta explain some of your children? <laughs> right. We Where that come from? That growing up. Where that come from? <laughs> what happened to shut your ass up? You better not say nothing. You I my said so. Uh -huh. How? Yeah, cause I said so. Yes. What? What happened to that, man? Stop. What do we do? What do we, Why? What do, we do? I tell you what. I tell you what. I bet your ass better not say nothing. Say something if you want to. See what that at? Yeah. That's been what that at? That's the fix all for that. Next yeah. one, Shirley. Why are you hiding? All right. Moving on to Henry and Schomburg. <laughs> Who says, my girlfriend does accounting work part-time at her church, but she's never been overly religious. Lately, she's been bragging about the preacher and giving me advice that came from him. Is she doing more than the books at church? Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> what, what, what in this question gives us enough information to go where you going with this? I, we, I don't know. If she's quoting the pastor. She's gotten off the She's quote. quoting the pastor. Mm -hmm. Maybe she been paying attention in the service. I don't know. Look, I don't. Know. We, <laughs> she don't, she doing count. <laughs> she well, doing she says she's not overly religious for the church. She didn't mm -hmm. want to give you advice. Mm -hmm. You know how many people ain't overly religious people is at the church right now. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. It ain't right. just your girl. So I wouldn't worry about it one way or another. You know, if it's mm -hmm. if it's sound advice, just go on and take mm -hmm. it. You know, she getting some special counseling from the pastor. It's all mm -hmm. to help you. So just but you, yeah. yeah, you know, a man you know. doesn't want his woman coming home and saying, "Well, the pastor said this," and the, you know, mm -hmm. talking about another man. You know. Yeah. Well, <laughs> see, number one, all your girl did was give her girlfriend the information. She ain't got to go in the house and say pastor said. See, but the whole letter, the question in this letter is, what is she doing with the pastor where she getting all this inside information? That's mm -hmm. what this is about. So, well, he, yeah, he wants to know, is his girlfriend doing more with the pastor than just mm -hmm. keeping the book? <laughs> you need to cut uh -oh. your sin down. Sign here, here, and here. <laughs> Well, I don't know. Hey, look, man, you know your girl better than we do. What you think she in that room? Next question. <laughs> we don't know. 
CJ. <laughs> so your your answer, CLO, you don't gave know. my answer. Hell, we don't uh-huh. know. You know her better we do. You tell us what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to move on to Tiffany then, since that one's straightened out. Tiffany in Augusta says, I'm married. And my husband has a son from a previous marriage. The ex-wife and stepdad gave his son a car for Christmas. My husband feels disrespected. I told him that he's overthinking it. Why is he upset at the stepdad for buying the car? Because <laughs> he didn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Making he him mad look at bad. the stepdad. Mm-hmm. I bet your son ain't mad. <laughs> at all. You rolling. Damn, step. Man, thank That's you. <laughs> Daddy, look what Step bought. Oh, I don't see that damn car. Get your damn car to drive. You can't park this car on this drive. Hey there. You need a ride, Hell, Daddy. Hell, he, buy you. Hell, he buy you a car for. Oh, I understand the father being upset because yeah. he got beat to the punch. And yeah. maybe the mm-hmm. stepfather mm-hmm. could be a little bit more fluent. You never right. know. Mm-hmm. You know, and maybe he wanted to buy his son his first car. Maybe that could happen, but you know, it didn't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So moving on, last one now, Steve. This is from Prissy. And, and he probably done looked at the uh, the, the the new stepfather. No, he can't do nothing with him. That's why uh-huh. the house complaining to the wife. Oh. Because he can't go over there, buy him something else, and see what happens. No, we can see what's happening right now, Pop. <laughs> see right there. That what else can he buy him? A house? <laughs> yeah, I'm buying him a house for his yeah. birthday. So oh, get ooh. ooh. Get ready. <laughs> All right. Last one again. This is from Prissy and uh, Danbury. Prissy says, I've been married for seven years, and we have three children, and I'm pregnant now. I asked my yeah. husband about. Yeah, I asked my husband about getting a vasectomy. He said, what if we get divorced and my new wife wants kids? Does this sound like he has one foot out of the door? (laughs) This is crazy. That was his answer. That that sounds like a junior answer. (laughs) Obviously, slanging is more important to him than anything. Yes. So I don't even know why you in here talking to me about getting myself cut on because that ain't going to happen because if something happened to me and you, I got to be able to go somewhere and reproduce now. You can't stop me. Uh, My job is to multiply. Mm-hmm. So what if my new you gonna wife wants you, kids? If we you gonna try to you you gonna try to crisscross out the timetable? That ain't what we doing. I'm here to multiply. What? I'm the X. I'm the X on the calculator, baby. I'm the X factor. I'm times this. Yeah, that has to be the dumbest yeah. response. Yeah, that's what we ever. Supposed to happen us and my yeah. new wife want kids, and I ain't gonna be able to. Ooh. <laughs> Wait, While she pregnant, dog. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Really? Dog, dog, you better be. I don't think you should go to sleep. <laughs> this pregnant woman might stab your ass. I don't know how you make that statement and think you're finna get some shut eye. Not right. right. Anyway. <laughs> Who yeah. says this? He did. There's a lot <laughs> of stupid people in this world. Yeah. <laughs> what if wow. you look like? Whoa, I had a friend one time uh, told mm-hmm. his wife, Oh, so you screwing Rollo now? I had a friend. <laughs> <laughs> right up to him and said, I said, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> we, we heard about that. <laughs> we heard about that. <laughs> yeah, I told y'all a friend of mine. I told you about right in there and told him. He said that to him. <laughs> I said, all right, now. Mm. <laughs> said it with conviction, didn't you? Yeah. So that's right up there with. <laughs> Why would I get a vasectomy and then my new wife, all I get right, a divorce and my new wife won't kid? Yeah. Uh, hmm? Thank um, you. Uh, coming up well, in the top of the hour, we'll have some entertainment news for you right so, after this. So that crazy. was entertainment news. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Actor Jonathan Majors has done his first interview since being found guilty of harassment and assault in his highly publicized domestic violence trial. Uh, Majors told ABC News anchor Lindsay Davis that he felt, quote, absolutely shocked and afraid by the guilty verdict. Majors still denies 
in, in injuring his ex-girlfriend, Grace Jabbar, and said, I was reckless with her heart, not with her body. Jonathan also made headlines when audio used in the case highlighted his affinity for credit Scott King and Michelle Obama, both women he told his white ex-girlfriend to aspire to. During the interview, Jonathan also mentioned his new girlfriend, Megan Good. He said, she's an angel. She's held me down like a Coretta. I'm so blessed to have her. Majors who will be sentenced on February 6th faces uh, up to a year in jail. She's referencing these people like that. To the huh? white girl. You say to the white girl. I, I don't... Yeah. He just... Yeah. 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 He need to... Okay. My Is he trying to pick a role references. model for? Is that what he's trying to do? Mm-hmm. I mean, those are good references. Those are great references. Yeah, great. Excellent. However, well, he might right. have to say Bob Streisand and Betty White, something like that. <laughs> Celine Dion. I mean, you got to find something Get she can relate something to. A little more. But you know, man, I I, I feel for this cat because uh, it okay. just seems to me the way the convictions came down, and then the guilties and the not guilties, the pieces that they found him guilty on, and the, and the not guilty pieces were so separated. You know, he didn't get hit for anything. Of physically abusing this woman, you know, he got, he got hit with a lot of different. I didn't understand the way they broke down the guilty, and I've never seen somebody get off with more not guilties, and then some guilties. Yeah. I and I didn't I didn't understand it, man. And then the whole thing of running down the street and she oh, running after him and on the video, man, it's weird. that's a yeah, crazy very much stuff. Most very dudes that's abusive to a woman is not running from them. Mm-hmm. You know, I just found this whole thing to be what they found him guilty of. It was just just my opinion from what I saw, because I'm not really well versed on it because I didn't follow it. What they found him innocent of was the real major stuff. They found him innocent of that. So I, I don't know what they finna the sentences to do to. I don't well, know. I know his lawyers are going to appeal. Mm-hmm. Try to appeal and all that. Yeah. Well, in other entertainment news, Steve Oprah says there's no bad blood between she and Taraji P. Henson. Um, of course, Taraji plays Suge Avery in the movie The Color Purple, the the latest version. Um, Oprah addressed the recent online rumors on the red carpet at the Golden Globes. Take a listen. I heard I was trending yesterday. What? Uh, because people are saying that I was not supporting Taraji. Taraji will tell you herself that I've been the greatest champion of this film, championing not only the behind the scenes production, but also everything that everybody needed. So whenever I heard that there was something that people needed, I'm not in charge of the budget because that's Warner Brothers. You know, that's the way the studio system works. And we as producers, everybody gets their salary that's negotiated by your team. And so whenever I heard there was an issue or there was a problem, there was a problem with the cars or there was a problem with the food, I would step in and do whatever I could to make it right. And I believe that she would even vouch for that. Wow. Break it down all the way down, Oprah. Mm -hmm. See, that's a person talking with with some facts and the the realness of how this industry works. You have to be careful when a person who claims to tell you is going to put the industry on front street and not be willing to tell you the whole truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the real whole truth of the matter is, brother, you know how this game works. We are all trying to find our niche in this game and play this game so we can support our families. And you, everybody knows that. Everybody knows that because we don't control the system out here in Hollywood. So when you talk about people are got this lucky break or this person was a plant or this person, this he all this and that. Hey man, just understand now. We, we, we are all playing this game by the same damn rules. We don't own none of these studios. We ain't got we ain't got none of that. We 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 don't have that power. One of the most powerful cats out there is Tyler Perry. And he put himself on the map with that ownership of his product and studios. Other than that, and even Tyler still got to play the game. Well, I mean, basically, that's what Oprah said. I'm a producer. I'm not the studio. 
But she, even knowing that, she still stepped in and helped and them get action. what they needed. That's yes. what I loved about that story. Yeah, yes. that, that's she why did. I say I applaud her for saying mm-hmm. it and telling the truth about it. Right. So yes. you know. Okay. Yeah. Finally, in entertainment news, Steve Joe Coy, you know him as a comedian, right? Brilliant. Well, um. He hosted, of course, the Golden Globes. It, it, it didn't go well for him. Um, he was a last-minute pick for the gig. He responded to the backlash on ABC's Good Morning America 3 Monday morning. He said, quote, I had fun. You know, it was a moment that I'll always remember. It's a tough room. It was a hard job. I'm not going to lie. I'd be lying if I said it doesn't hurt. Hosting is just a tough gig. Yes, I'm a stand-up comic, but that hosting position, it's a different style. I kind of went in and did the writer's thing. We had 10 days to write this monologue. It was a crash course. I feel bad, but I got to still say I loved what I did um asked about the moments he regretted and and joe said that um i think it was when taylor swift um you know that joke went a little flat he said it was a weird joke i guess but it was more about the nfl yeah i think the room was a little tight because they didn't well, know that was who a tight was. Room. i yeah. saw it that was tight yeah. It was tight. Yeah. It was. <laughs> yeah. I saw the sweat coming off his brow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> coming up in 20 minutes after the hour, we'll talk about frisky fitness right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Shaquille O'Neal's all-star comedy jam takes over Resorts World Las Vegas February 9th and 10th over the big game weekend in Vegas. The comedy showcase is hosted by Dion Cole, and it features D.L. Hughley, uh, Earthquake, Desi Banks, and others. You could win a trip for two to attend the show on February 9th, and this includes round-trip coach airfare and a two-night hotel stay. You can enter now and get rules at steveharveyfm.com. It is sponsored by AEG Presents and Resorts World Las Vegas. That's steveharveyfm.com for all the info. All right, we're going to switch gears here now, guys. Frisky Fitness. All right, that's what we're calling this. Did your significant other join a gym as part of their New Year's resolution? Be careful because according to sex expert Jessica Leone, the gym is a hotbed hotbed for affairs, especially in the month of January when so many people are signing up for gym memberships. Leone said, uh, went on to say, research shows that testosterone can spike up for up to an hour after heading to the gym. Uh, this behavior can have an extraordinary effect on your sex drive, and that's why gyms are a hotbed for affair seekers this month. She says people should become suspicious if their partner suddenly becomes obsessed with the gym and is spending <laughs> a lot of time there. Okay. Mm. <laughs> so here's the question. So damn, they try. We know to you guys. Shape. Okay. So just, just, we're going to forget the fact that they might be trying to get in shape. We're going to turn this into something else. Go ahead. Yes, she already did. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, they fellas, before she read this right here, a uh-huh. woman wrote this article. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I, saw that. I saw that. So has working out had a bad effect on your sex drive? Are you in a mood after your workout? You know, you do cold plunge, Steve, cardio, Tommy, you run. Junior, you lift weights. So what's the story, you guys? Ain't nothing. I no. want it before I run, when I get through running. Yeah, okay. I, what? While it's I'm not running. When I, yeah, it's not when I want it. It's if I can get it, is the question. <laughs> it's not us. I start putting in appointments now. You doing anything next Wednesday? I'm just <laughs> you got a book in advance. You doing anything next Wednesday? You, can I get thirty minutes of your time? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna hold you. Long. I done worked out. I done been so as hell and still tried it. <laughs> <laughs> I done pulled muscles, Charlie horses, toe spasms. And you're still in the mood wanting to get busy after all that? This, what? I lay that yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, I lay that foot off that bed and let that toe spasm work itself out while I'm still there. Yeah. Yeah. Get that thing off that side of that bed and let it go on and work itself out. But what about the cold plunge? Because you're just, you know, you're always so cold after. Cold plunging is not good to discuss when it comes no. to sex. You <laughs> don't have sex they they don't like, go together. When you, when you first get out that cold plunge, you're not very attractive to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> you need to turn the heat on. <laughs> Coming up in 34 minutes after the hour, are you capable of surprising yourself? We'll talk about that right uh, after yeah, this. Once you get out that cold plunge, wow. <laughs> shock of your life. I got news for you. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
Here's a question. Are you guys capable of surprising yourself? In this wild video clip, it's gone viral where this man leaped over the bench in a Las Vegas courtroom and attacked the judge at his sentencing hearing after she denied him probation last week. Now, we all saw the clip. And we just assume that this guy didn't just walk into the courtroom planning to do this, to jump over the bench. He probably surprised himself when he did that. What do you guys think? And have you I ever surprised got, yourself? Uh, he surprised himself. He got a hell of a vertical. I mean, he, yeah. he leaked. Did you see that, that vertical? amazing. Yes. He cleared that whole bench across the front. I tell you what the real surprise is going to be when he bring his ass back to court for this new sentencing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he would. He go to surprise. Yeah, yeah. surprise. Just surprise. took whatever that little, whatever that lady was gonna give you. You should have went on and took that because you wasn't gonna get probation. But now, boy, yeah, yeah, yeah it's you open. jumped on a white woman on film in court, and she a judge. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking yeah. ten. What you thinking? Ten at least. Oh, dog, he finna get some time for that. Time well, he right went now. back. He had to go back for sentencing. Uh, yeah. The other day. So. Well, did they, did they give it to him? Well, they had his face covered up. They had a. <laughs> he had, no he had the spit man. He had the spit mask on yeah. and everything. Well, well he here's what I think. Was. See, he got. He had to go back because now they got to finish up the trial, right? So he gonna get mm-hmm. the time that mm-hmm. she was gonna give him for that when he when he got mad, found out he wasn't gonna get probation mm-hmm. again. Mm-hmm. The first. Now case. they going the new charges. That mm-hmm. ain't, they ain't done that yet. He Ooh. gonna go to jail for this here for, for the mm-hmm. for the original thing he was in that for. Right. While right. he in jail, he gonna have to come back and face these new charges: assault, mm-hmm. battery, attempt. They gonna hang attempted oh, murder on his ass. Bitch. They finna what put is- his ass. He finna do some time. That he was took he in there like three guys decision. to get him get him off. He looking like Doctor Lechner now. Hello, Clarice. He got all that stuff on. <laughs> yeah. Now. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that wasn't that wasn't that, that, that wasn't the smartest thing he's done. No, yeah, no. and it no. came from out of nowhere. I mean, he just well, he could have yeah. made the How Olympics. You know, though. He could have high jumped. You know, he could have. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's ignorance. You, ignorance usually come out of nowhere. <laughs> it don't just say, yeah. don't, don't it always surprise you? Yeah. When you see people yeah. do some real ignorant stuff. It seems like it come it out does. of nowhere. It be it be a little surprise. You go, damn. Is his ass just running yeah. over the, yeah. the bitch? Who is he punching thinking? this white woman? Yes, he crazy. Your black ass know you on tape. What is you doing? What's wrong with you? Oh, you done jumped over there. Oh, you thought you was white. Yeah. You gonna jump your ass over this bitch. Boy, let me tell you something. As soon as that lady said, nah, I don't think you've learned your lesson. We're gonna yeah. have to do a little bit more. Wait, he did what? make yeah. the announcement, though, Tom. He did make the announcement. Blank that. Not today. Yeah. Yeah, he did. He, he gave made the some sort of a warning. Yeah. We didn't know it was gonna be Whoa. that, though. Woo. Mm. No. I guess they're going to do the sentencing 19 months to four years in prison. Mm-hmm. Oh, his hands, his mouth, everything was gone. They say, you're not going to come in here and do this again. He has the same to be judge. strong. Yeah, because it, it took too many people to to get him off of her. And he had to be. So, so that's the thing. Have you guys ever, like, surprised yourself with an act? I've never like, done anything like that. Not like that. <laughs> not that. Oh, but God. something well, in a negative. Yeah, I mean, and, yeah, I've surprised myself. Like what? What happened? Quickly. Oh. <laughs> that requires an O. Uh oh. <laughs> All my kids was a surprise. <laughs> so you surprised face. yourself Fix with your kids. <laughs> yeah, that was the first big surprise. I've had several surprises after that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have. I have. What, Tom? What? I didn't peed in a water bottle while I was driving and didn't drip nothing. I was outstanding with. It. I mean, I mean, I surprised myself. I'm you know what? what? <laughs> when you get past fifty, you know, when you got to go, you got to go. I didn't peed in a water bottle while I was driving. <laughs> All people over fifty, as men, we keep water, empty water bottles in our car cars. Yeah. We do that because we oh, know. No. We have I've what? done that one time. That's on really oversharing. Turnpike because yeah. they didn't have no rest areas and no stops on the West Virginia Turnpike. I peed in a bottle and had too much. Okay. Okay. Uh, Overflow. The prank phone call is coming up next right after this. Ah, Overflow. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. And the subject is, his sister catfished me. We'll find out what that's all about in just a few, because right now the nephew is here with today's prank phone call. What you got for us, Neff? Well, before we get into this prank, I got to do this. I got to say happy birthday to the one and only that means the world to me. January 9th, on this day, the one and only Jacqueline Patria Miles, a.k.a. Lemonade, baby. It's my baby birthday. birthday. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday to you. Congratulations. I thought you were saying that for the (laughs) sickness. No. (laughs) 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 It's, It's my baby birthday. Happy birthday. Can't be with you right now. I hate it. I hate it, but we're going to make it work. I'm going to make it all up to you because I made Christmas good, didn't I, girl? Yes, I did. I made Christmas good. I was a cold Santa Claus. I was a cold Santa Claus. You hear me? I was cold. All right, to the prank. This right here goes out to all the members of Five Beta Sigma. All the members of Five Beta Sigma. Happy Founders Day to you all. This prank right here is you ain't no Sigma. You ain't no Sigma. Sigma cat dog, if you would. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach a uh, Greg, please. Yeah, this he. Uh, how you doing? My name is Bernard, Five Beta Sigma. I'm over Pledge Relations. Uh-huh. I'm giving you a call today, man. Um, you attended Prairie View A&M University, am I correct? Prairie yeah, that's A&M? right. Prairie View A&M. Okay. And from my understanding, you pledged Five Beta Sigma in fall of 91. That's correct. All right, that's the Delta Theta chapter, correct? Yes. All right. Here's where we're we're having some problems here going through the records. Going through the records? Actually, looking at the records that we have here at headquarters, you're not actually uh, an official member of Phi Beta Sigma. Uh, I I don't know what has taken place, but it's... Wait, wait, wait a minute. What? What do you mean I'm not a member? Looking at our records here at national headquarters, it's indicating that you're not an official member of Phi Beta Sigma. I don't know what could have gone wrong. Uh, with this no, thing. no, that ain't right, man. That ain't right because see, Delta Theta is recognized nationally, so why wouldn't I be nationally recognized? I'm not certain, sir. Maybe it's something that took place on that that actual line of Fall '91. We're actually going to have to do some research on everything that's going on with your line as well as the chapter. But how is that possible if they gave if they gave me a certificate and and the plaque and I got my my pen and I mean I'm a Sigma. What you mean? Okay, sir, I don't know. I, what I'm looking at here, and I and, and, and please understand, I, I want to try to clear this matter up. Like yeah, said, yeah, I'm, we need to clear I'm, this matter up. Who, who else? Is there somebody there, like an a, a overseer or a, maybe a, a, the head president of your branch or something that I could talk to or something? Well, I'm actually, I am actually over pledge relations. Uh-huh. And I wanted to give you a call personally so we can try to rectify the matter. And, and it's going to take us some time to iron this thing out. But what I need you to do as of this point, yeah, and you know what the problem is that I'm noticing is that all of the people that were on your line, they are official. For some reason, Mr. Greg is an official. So yeah, I want to. I don't understand that because I was the line president. So how how is everybody else able to be a sigma and not me when I did all the paperwork that it takes to to, to, to for the process to be right? I don't understand. That. Sir, uh, you know what, brother? Uh, I can't call you brother for the fact that you right now yeah, you're you not a brother. You can call me brother because I'm a Sigma. Sh- Sir, here's what we're going to have to do, Greg. We're going to have to get you to, first of all, if you're dealing with anybody alumni-wise, we're asking that you don't go to any meetings right now. We're also asking that um, you don't wear any uh, Phi Beta Sigma paraphernalia. Paraphern- At this point, we want to make sure and get clarity that you are definitely a brother. Wait a minute, man. I am definitely a brother. Do you know what I had to go through? To get where I am today to be a Sigma, all the du- y'all, y'all took y'all dues. What happened to that? If, if you're taking my dues, you should be able to tell me, yo, man, um, we got this going on. Certain things are going on with your line. We need to, we need to check you. You took all my money. That's the thing. I, I'm seeing checks that have gone through for other people yeah. that were on that line. I don't see you. Your and, name. And, and to this day, I'm like a lifetime member. So what the hell are you talking about? I have no records indicating that you're a lifetime member. That's what I'm saying, sir. We no, we've got to no, get some. B- yeah, dog. Somebody need to tell me something today. We're gonna to try to get to the end of this by the end of the week. It's gonna take no, a little no, bit no, of time. No, 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 no. You're not understanding what I'm saying, man. Cause I'm a sigma to the heart, dude. You know what I'm talking about? Y'all playing with my heart right now, man. Ain't nobody gonna do that and get away with. It. I don't know what the is going on. You know, here's what we can do. We can bring you back in and do another pledging process. 
pledge? Did you understand what you just said to me? No, man, this, that ain't happening, dog. I done been through this already, man. I'm not ple pledging. I'm not signing my name on nothing else because I have pledged. I'm not doing that no more. Y'all need to get somebody on the phone that can answer my questions. I want to know what's going on. Okay, right now, and, and, and I understand, you know, the disbelief of what's going on. I really do. You, you obviously know, don't. Uh, so, you, uh, you a brother? Brother, we're going to try this. What, what year did you go across? Did you walk the sand? I mean, tell me what's going on. Brother, I'm, I'm fall 89, brother. And? Now, what we're going to have to do right now is, first of all, no paraphernalia. No paraphernalia. You're trying to tell me that I can't wear what's nearest and dearest to my heart next to my wife and my child. you telling me that I can't go around and proclaim what I am? That's like telling me I can't be black. What the hell are you saying? And another thing we're going to have to get you to do, I understand you have a brand, a Sigma brand. That's yeah. going to have to come off until we until we get this taken care of. What? Got, Wait a minute. You talk about a medical procedure. What are you saying? Sir, we cannot allow you to wear a brand representing Phi Beta Sigma when right now you are not a oh, member you can't, of Phi you Beta Sigma. allow that. That brand me was allowed to put the brand on me. Now, I, I can't be allowed to wear something that I've been wearing for almost 15 years. Are you crazy? Come on, man. That's some crazy right now, there, we got to get you to take the brand on me and do all of this. Brand? What the hell are y'all? Man, this is some Look here, uh, brother Bernard. What, Bernard, is that what your name is? You need to get somebody on this phone. Wait a minute. That's all right. I know the president. My myself. How about that? Excuse I would me? just call in and I'll figure out my d bill. So I'm right up. now, we need you to take the brand off or nah, keep it coming nah, off. No, you come take the brand off of me, if you want it that bad. Come get it. That's what you do. You are not a member of Phi Beta Sigma. I you don't give a what you talking about, dog. I am a member. If you want something over here, holler at your boy. That's what you do. You bad, come do it. Sir, I'm telling you for the final time, do not wear any paraphernalia. Keep I don't want to hear that talking about no final. L let me tell you what's final. I am a Phi Beta Sigma to the heart. Boo, boo. Sir, all I'm telling you is no more shirts and, and cover that brand up until we Look here, man. I'm going to wear everything. I, I got a hat. I'm going to have that on. So, matter of fact, I'm going to wear that day just to get on your nerves. You Sir, you're going to have to get brand covered up until we figure out if you are. If you want this brand covered up, you come get it. Until then, you better get the away from me. That's what I'm talking about. Don't you want none of this. You put that brand up and don't you wear no shirts no more. Let me tell you something. I ain't covering Come get it if you want it. I got you one more thing. I got to the heart, baby. This is blue fire. You don't want none. You don't want none. Y'all, this is some man. I don't this know what to do. One more thing I need to say to you. Are you listening? Say what you got to say. You ain't getting this this is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your boy. <laughs> boy, y'all had me ready to kill <laughs> by my <laughs> man. Y'all, boy. Let me one more thing, man. What is the baddest radio show in the land, Greg? What is it? The Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> <laughs> that boy, that's serious about here. <laughs> Happy Founders Day to J. Anthony Brown. Yeah. There's a Sigma named Paul Turner out of Chicago. Mm -hmm. So happy Founders Day to Paul Turner. Happy Founders Day to Emmett Smith. Smith. Happy Founders Day to all 11 of y'all. Every last <laughs> oh, one. Wow. Is that all it is? You had to say Day. that, though. You had to say That's that. That's it. That last part. You can just let it be Happy they Founders can Day. <laughs> that was Comedy good. Zone this weekend, Jacksonville, Florida. You already know the nephew is coming. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, tickets on sale. Land in the cut. Dayton, Ohio at the Funny Bone. 26, 27, 28. That is. Sure. All right, nephew. Thank you. Coming up next, it is the strawberry letter for today. The subject, his sister catfished me. We'll get into that right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. And you never know, it could be yours. It could be yours. So buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is. Strawberry Letter. Thank you, nephew. Subject 
His sister catfished me. Dear Stephen Shirley, I'm 38 years old and I've been with the same man for five years and he's not focused on marriage or taking our relationship further, but he won't let me go. He accuses me of seeking attention from other men because of the way I dress and I see that as him not trusting me. He's so paranoid all the time, so I reassure him that I'm not up to no good when I'm hanging out with my friends. I told myself I'd give him another year to propose. I would never tell him about my deadline because I don't want him to propose unless he really wants to. I took a short break from him and I stopped playing house. I went and stayed with my mom for a month to force my boyfriend to take me on dates and make time for me if he wanted to have sex with me. During that time, I got a DM from a handsome guy that said he saw me at a career fair that I was speaking at. We exchanged phone numbers and I gave him career advice and helped him with his resume. I never talked with him on the phone, only texts and emails. He wanted us to meet up somewhere and I told him that I have a boyfriend. That led to him opening up about the trouble he was having with his love life and I told him about how my boyfriend takes me for granted. Little did I know, my boyfriend's 17-year-old sister was catfishing me and I had been communicating with her, with her, not the handsome guy. I was so busted. My boyfriend broke up with me and I tried to reason with him but then I realized that I'm too old for games. I did not cheat or do anything terrible. Should I stop fighting for this relationship? Well, um, yeah, if you're asking me, yes, 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 absolutely yes. Because what are you fighting for? You're not fighting for anything. He's not worth it. Um, uh, wh what would you be fighting to save? You weren't happy with him anyway. I mean, you said you've been with this man for five years and nothing. No proposal, nothing. Uh, no working on the relationship, trying to take it to the next level. None of that. And, and all this moving in with your mom to force him to take you out and to want to have sex with you is crazy. I mean, don't you know if he wanted to do any of these things, he would? Uh, and that includes proposing and his sister catfishing you hmm what what is that all about uh th this is all just stupid and immature and like you say games he broke up with you over that uh, you didn't cheat or do anything terrible, you said. You helped this guy with his resume. You gave him some career advice. And you told him you had a man that took you for granted. You never even saw this guy or talked to him on the phone. And your man broke up with you over that after five years of dating. Hmm. I, I think this incident just gave him a reason to do what he's wanting, what he had been wanting to do all along. And that was get out of this relationship. So to you, I say the same thing. Get out of this relationship. Steve, well, you're out of it because he broke up with you, but get over it. Steve? Well, this letter kind of ignorant to me, so yeah. <laughs> I think I should address it as an ignorant person. <laughs> um, uh, doing more in 24 is my new slogan. I've heard that somebody said that anyway, mm -hmm. so I've just adapted it. Um, they certainly don't want to say I thought of it because then that would be just something else my ass done stole. So let's just the go letter. and just say that, letter. you know. Uh, Talk uh, about you, the letter yeah, right now, babe. Come down, still. <laughs> anyway. Ah, just pray for me. Father God, help that. All I the time. <laughs> I ask God to let there be more of him and less of me in 24. More you and less me in 24. And I'm trying because the me is so dominant. I want to say <sighs> something and respond. But um, the God in me is holding my tongue. This 38-year-old woman is uh, dating this man that ain't thinking about her, really. No further than what it is. He's really just got her there at his beckoning call, seems to me. Uh, he's not focused on marriage or taking a relationship further, but he won't let me go. No, 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 no. That's not true. It ain't that he won't let you go, it's you won't leave. See, stop blaming men for holding on to you when it's you that's holding on to them. Stop giving a man that kind of power over you. It ain't that he won't let you go, it's that you don't have the courage to leave. Now, he's always saying that you're trying to seek attention from other men because of the way I dress. And I see that as him not trusting me. Both of those things are true. Who, When you get dressed in the morning, ladies, don't you dress to impress? Yeah. 
It might be yourself. Someone. It might be your yeah. co-workers. It might be right. your husband. Mm -hmm. But Somebody. you dress to impress. Mm -hmm. Now, if somebody at the job get impressed, then that's just bonus. But I put it on to put it on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. <laughs> I put it on to put it on. And anyway, he's so paranoid, and I got to reassure him that I'm up to no good when I'm hanging out with my friends. I told myself give him another year to propose, but I would never tell him about my deadline because I don't want him to propose unless he really wants to. Well, that don't make no damn sense right there. That's a mistake. Ladies, if y'all don't start putting timelines on some of these men, you ain't going to ever get what you want. Because as long as we getting what we want, we cool. Now you did a smart thing. You took a short break from him, and you and you stopped playing house. You wouldn't stay with your mom for a month to force my boyfriend to take me on dates and make time for me if he wanted to have sex with me. That was a good move. It just you only did it for thirty days. You should have kept that plan in place. When we come back. We'll tell you about the DM she got and how the catfish began. <laughs> All right, Steve. Hang on. We'll have part two of your response coming up. At 23 minutes after the hour, today's Strawberry Letter subject, her sister, his sister catfished me. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's Strawberry Letter. The subject is his sister catfished me. The 38-year-old woman got this man that don't half want her, so she done played the games with him and stuff, and she done set a deadline. She want a proposal in a year, but she didn't get a guy the deadline, which now he don't know. Me and stupid, we don't take hints. Um, so I think you should. If you have a deadline, you ought to give it to a guy. And you said the reason you didn't do that because you didn't want him to propose to you unless he really wants to. Well, they won't. A man ain't going to propose to you unless he really want to. But he ain't going to give you a date unless he know you really want to. Hello, you see how it works? Hmm. So, you know, y'all can't have one without the other ladies. Uh, so you wanted to stop playing house with him, so you took a break from him, and you went and you stayed with your mom for a month to force him to take you on dates and make time for you if he wanted to have sex with you. During that time... I got a DM from a handsome guy that said he saw me at a career fair I was speaking at. We exchanged phone numbers. I gave him career advice, helped him on his resume, never talked to him on the phone, only texts and emails. He wanted us to meet up somewhere, and I told him I have a boyfriend. That led to him opening up about the trouble he was having with his love life, and I told him about how my boyfriend takes me for granted. Little did I know, my boyfriend's 17-year-old sister was catfishing me. Now, for those of you that's like me that thought that catfishing was a sport down in Mississippi and <laughs> riverbanks, let me help you understand something. Catfishing is when someone pretends to be someone else without your knowledge to get you to perform some type of act or get you to talk or make a commitment what I am keeping from you whole time their real identity. Mm -hmm. That's basically what catfishing is. The boyfriend, 17-year-old girl, sent a picture to her saying, this is who I am, and I met you at a place you were speaking at. And that's what the catfish began. But because they didn't get on the phone and have no verbal or FaceTime. See, FaceTime and stops all this. Yeah. But because they didn't do no FaceTime, now you was communicating with his 17-year-old sister who was catfishing you. Because she don't like you anyway. And don't be surprised if your boyfriend didn't put her up to it because he was jealous of you anyway. So he probably had his little sister do this to set you up because he ain't trying to marry you all the new way. He been suspicious of you anyway. So now he thought he was busted. And you said, I'm so busted. My boyfriend broke up with me. I tried to reason with him, but then I realized I'm too old for games. I did not cheat or do anything terrible. Should I stop fighting for this relationship? Shirley said you should. And you know what? I agree with her 100%. Because what you fighting for? You ain't got time for these games. Him or his little ignorant ass sister. <laughs> but he more ignorant than the little sister is. At least she's 17. She dumb for a reason. You got catfished. So what? You didn't do nothing. You ain't meet with him, and then when he tried to meet you, told him you had a boyfriend. He opened up about how he was having a hard time with his girl, and then you said your boyfriend taking you for granted. All that's true. 
Now your boyfriend gonna break up. Now he gonna make you crawl back. Now y'all gonna start over. Now he gonna buy another five years with you. That's how that's gonna work. Good riddance. Next time you go to a conference to speak, you need mm-hmm. to spot a handsome guy and DM him. Oh. Quit fooling with this man that ain't fooling with you. And ladies, listen to me. Stop expecting a man to get the hints when we don't do hints well at all. If you are giving your man a year to propose to you, but you don't tell him he got a year and then he don't propose and now you mad. No. If he has a year to propose, tell him, listen, you got one year to get yourself together when it comes to me. If you don't think you love me enough in a year to want to spend the rest of your life with me, then I will know in a year and we can part ways. That's what you have to do. So stop talking about he wouldn't let you go. No, you are afraid to leave. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. Any questions, ladies? Shirley? Well, I mean, what what do you think? Why did he break up with her? I think that he didn't do any of these things because he didn't want to. You know, well, he didn't he propose. He doesn't want to her. marry her. He's not going to yeah. let the relationship move any further because he's getting everything he wants. Yeah. They play in house. He having yeah. sex. Mm-hmm. He got the chick of his dreams. You want the day of your dreams when that ain't his dream. You making all his dreams come true, but he ain't making none of yours come true. Mm-hmm. So that's why you ladies always have to have that s- issue, that soft ultimatum. Yeah. Or else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or else you're going to have nothing. And I don't see what you're fighting for. Let them break up. Bye. (laughs) Why is she she thinking that it's him that's paranoid? It's him that's thinking that she's going out, you know, uh, dressing a certain way. Because there are men who have great manipulation Mm -hmm. skills and will make you think it's you when it's them the whole time. The best offense is a good defense. I mean, excuse me. The best defense is a good offense. Right. If you throw in shade and blame on the other person all the time, they ain't got time to throw it on you because they're over there playing defense. It's an old trick. Yeah. He yeah. done fooled you. Stop um, being fooled. All right, Steve. Thank you. Post your comments on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM on Instagram and Facebook and check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on the very free iHeartRadio app. Free never sounded so good. Download it today. Now coming up at 46 minutes after the hour, it's Junior and Sports Talk right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for Junior and Sports Talk. What you got, Junior? Well, the National College Football Playoffs was the championship game was last night. And uh, let's go ahead and give a congratulations to Michigan. Come Michigan on. is the national yeah. champs. Yeah, yeah. Beat, beat Washington 34 to 13 down in Houston. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, what, what's wrong? That's you you wasn't rude for me. I ain't nothing else. That, that, that ain't what we're here to talk about. Go ahead, though. <laughs> well, we gonna, we gonna, no, don't you well, tell well, them what well, it's going to be like well, uh, in Houston on Saturday. What it's going to be they like. They got to go back to that same stadium, too, Tommy. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, the Browns and the Texans play in that same stadium on Saturday. Mm-hmm. They're going to clean up mm-hmm. all this confetti and get it ready for y'all. That's, That's what they're going to do. <laughs> they're getting all the confetti up right now. They're sweeping. Now, That's massage that, partner. Massage that. Yeah. yeah well, you all, I'm going to tell you, the two of you need to be in deep, solitary prayer. <laughs> that somehow the Texans beat the Browns. And if they do, don't you bring your behind to work on Monday. Oh, no, I'm That's coming to work. Do. But see, oh. see, 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 once again, I done What's told that? y'all, I'm battle tested. I, I done told y'all. What that got to I done do told with the Browns? Listen to Texas. me. Because I done lost my whole life with the Browns. <laughs> yeah, no. See, I've had my hope snatched from me year after year after year after year. I ain't even, that ain't even nothing to me. What what is gonna surprise y'all is y'all two young ass dummies sitting up in here actually thinking y'all ass gonna win. And then if you don't, oh, wow, I'm gonna be man. right here for you. Oh, I'm going to provide for you all the little words of encouragement that you're going to need to know. Because I've had it since yeah. 1964. I watched the Browns beat the Baltimore Colts and okay. win the only championship. I was seven years old and sat on the floor back against the refrigerator with my dad. Mm-hmm. That's the last time. Well, let me ask you this. Um, we ain't 19- had it with all of us. We got no. cheated. 
<laughs> when, when, in 1964, when they won, yeah. was that when they was playing with the leather helmets? No, no, no. They had oh. Damn, Junior. Damn, Junior. What? He said Hip-hop 1964. It's so tag okay, it, Junior. Because we got real helmets. And we used these real ones. I ain't know. Mm-hmm. In, in, in 64, I had hairline, too. <laughs> oh. you go. Now we talking about helmets. And ain't you got to put a helmet on your head? And don't say helmet hide your hairline? And ain't his head says hiding me? You see how I tied that on? That's how you going to tie that yeah. together? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we see what you did there. Tied it all together. I didn't see it, though, but I see it now. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing. I'll tell you one thing. Y'all better hope y'all, y'all better pray to the Lord y'all win. Mm. <laughs> Go ahead, Shirley. All right. Thank you, Junior. Coming up at the top of the hour, a man, Steve, on social media needs some advice from you uh, because of some drama over a last name change. We'll talk about it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, here's a question for you. This is from Wendell on Steve Harvey FM. Wendell writes, I married into step parenthood situation three years ago, and now there's some last name drama brewing up. My wife hates her ex, and I do my best to stay out of it. First, because I don't need to be involved in it. And second, I don't want my stepdaughter to hear me say anything negative about her dad. Now, my wife is upset that her daughter is not calling me dad. And I think it's a decision she needs to make for herself without pressure. As long as she knows she's cared about, that's all that matters to me. She's also pressuring her uh, her to go along with changing her last name to mine rather than the name she's had for the last 12 years. I can't imagine how messed up it is for her to be put in the middle of something like that. I need to address it with my wife, but I'm not sure how to. But I do think it's damaging and inappropriate. Any advice? Well, I think you, you're you approaching this the right way. I mean, I, I can only applaud you, brother, for taking the Ooh. stance that you're taking, that you're being so gracious towards your uh, daughter. Stepdaughter. Uh, I mean, daughter, that's yeah. the way it is. Um, I don't use the term step. We just decided never to do that. These are the kids, so the other people got to make their own decisions. It's their life. You do it the way you want to. But this man is being very, very admirable towards the daughter. I can't imagine having her having to do this. I think you're absolutely right. You can't make these people call you dad. That has to be a decision on their own. And I think that that's uh, the way you should approach it. I think you talking to your wife should just be, hey, look, let's just give her time. She may come around. She may want to change her last name. I've been in this situation before. Steve, it sounds like the the wife is still bitter with the ex-husband. That's what it sounds like. Well, that's well, what she said. She yeah, don't ain't bitter. My wife she hates hated. her ex. Yeah, yeah that, that ain't bitter. That's hate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm familiar with both. The internet is full of that right now in 2004. Bitterness and hate. You've all seen it. 24, 2024. Yeah, yes, it's out yes. there. It's, it's, it's a lot of hate and bitterness. The woman hates him. So, yeah, she wants to get rid of that, but then you got to give the little girl time to make the adjustment. She's 12. Yeah. You know, she may eventually, like I said, we I've, had, I've lived that situation. Mm-hmm. And so, two of my children changed their last name. They came and voluntarily wanted to do it. And it happened. The third one didn't. It was cool with me. It was an honor when they asked me, you know. I felt mm-hmm. very proud because I yeah. had lived enough for them and been around them enough since they were young to, I, I feel the role. You know, I stepped in and did the thing and I, I applaud uh, stepfather, so dad? to speak, for <laughs> going in and stepping in and filling the role because yeah. a lot of these fathers, some fathers walk away mm-hmm. and they leave these children with no daddy. Then another man come in and fills the role you gotta get that dude a round of applause, man. Yeah. Cause that cat yeah. right there, he's a special yeah. dude. There's a lot of men out there doing that. Yeah. So, so how should he approach his wife? Uh-huh. Shirley, but just talking, to reiterate, you that's in, all. We... You know, Shirley, in 2024, you gonna listen more. 2024, <laughs> maybe someone you didn't hear you. Come on. I know, baby. So listen to me. Let me. Well, I, I guess so. Let me reiterate. 
reiterate. Because obviously you heard. Uh-huh. Iterate. It's iterate. Oh, iterate. Oh, oh, reiterate. Oh, 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 come on, nephew, you with say? the grandma love. Uh, yeah, reiterate. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. He got nothing with that little degree. He Boy, go on on it, baby. Little, little military <laughs> school. <laughs> Not. So come on. What? I just think that you sit your wife down and say, hey, listen, let's continue to give her the time she needs to come around. If she calls me dad, that's fine. But the fact that I love her and I'm going to take care of her, that's good enough for me right now. I want you to take the pressure off yourself and your daughter. I love the both of y'all. Let's just live our life. If she comes around, she does. If she don't, it's okay, too. Great advice. We'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at 20 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, here's a strange story from your favorite store, the Bass Pro Shop. Uh, An Alabama man. (laughs) I know. We know how much you love this store. An Alabama man was arrested after a wild scene at a Bass Pro Shop. This was just outside of Birmingham. Police say 42-year-old George O. went on a rampage, which which began when he crashed his car into a pole outside in the parking lot. From there, he stripped naked, ran into the store, and did a cannonball into the large aquarium. Cops arrived, and uh, George climbed out of the tank as they approached him, but he shouted at them and dove back into the water. As officers ordered him to get out, he climbed out and fell to the concrete floor below and knocked himself unconscious. He's charged with... Public lewdness, disorderly conduct, and so on and so on and so on. So, <laughs> Steve, you love First the store. What would you? <laughs> Every Bass Pro Shop has that giant aquarium in it. The aquarium. Oh, really? Yeah, because they show you how lures work in the water a lot of times. Oh. oh. A lot of them had that. I'm not sure if my favorite one down in Macon has it. I don't remember seeing the one in Macon, but a lot of them had the big aquariums in it. The one now, in George Old and took his, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he got a, took his naked ass down there and stood up on the edge of that tank and slipped and busted his head on that concrete, fell wide open. Dang. Yeah, he knocked his ass All right. out. <laughs> George. Coming up in 33 minutes after the hour, we'll play a round of Would You Rather right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for a round of Would You Rather. Would you rather, on a cold winter day, enjoy a bowl of hot chili or a bowl of gumbo? Junior better eat that hot chili as soon as it get cold for his ass <laughs> being in the hospital. With well, I got to eat the he chili. You got to eat some chili or something, baby. I want the gumbo. The gumbo hot. Yeah. Why your ass still in these cold climbers? You need to take your ass there. We told you. This is not about sickle cell. Oh, man. It is if it get cold enough. (laughs) This is our dude right here. I've learned more about sickle cell anemia than I have ever known in my life hanging with my little homie Junior. But I'm telling you right now, Unc, though, you got the best phone call still, dog. Don't nobody call better than you do, dog. Hello. Hey, Unc. All right, now. No, 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 this is how I go. Hey, Junior, what's happening? Hey, uh, how you doing? How you doing? Uh, wait a minute, hold up, dog. I ain't hanging that dog click. Because I don't want to be the one on the phone that he last talked to, because now I'm all, all in the criminal investigation. You know, they're looking at his phone. No, see, they looking at his phone log. And yeah. then they looking at her, the last phone call. Now I'm down at the police station. Like, what did he say? Yeah. No, now I ain't finna do that. <laughs> From sickle cell? Yeah, yeah. crazy. Yeah, because on 48 sale. hours, when they find the dude the, the phone, they always want to talk to the last person that talked to him. I seen that on 48 That's hours. That's a murder <laughs> investigation. <laughs> sickle cell. What but if he had about? a crisis, I'm not finna be the last one. He <laughs> just hang up, click. He got Dale, but he can talk to. He got Paul he can talk to. Dad, he yeah. got Keisha he can talk to. Yeah. He can talk to all them people. That talk to. He got kids now. Let him be the last one. Oh, it's Keisha. Queisha. Is His a- wife. Queisha. Oh, God. All right. Shut up. Don't worry about it. Queisha. That's a yeah. Yeah. It Queen is. Queen. Yes, that's her name. Yeah. All right, it's look. Queisha. 
All this yeah, time? Uh, yes. yes. <laughs> Carla just told you. Yeah, Uncle, that's her name. Damn, you really thought it was call Keisha. <laughs> call call Keisha. Every time I talk well, he to up her. there. Hey, Keisha. Hey, Keisha. Like... She ain't never seen nothing. <laughs> <laughs> she, and she know, too. She said, you know Harvey ain't say my name, right? I said, I know. Just don't say nothing. Just go with it. Damn, just say I've been calling back. a little KK Neil. You know, <laughs> KK. <laughs> oh, man. Yes. Oh my gosh. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Oh, what, all right. What do we do? Okay. Uh, would you rather? Would you rather shovel snow or rake leaves? Oh, rake leaves. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Then leaves. shovel snow. Yeah. All right. Would you rather have average sex every single day for the rest of your life, or would you rather have great sex for the rest of your life once a year? Once a year. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go huh? take them average, take that average, and just go and just get used to it. You know? <laughs> That's it's today's it's round of Would You Rather, because we spend most of the time talking about sickle that this cell. Is what it is, so, you know. <laughs> Coming up in 49 minutes after the hour, we'll have some closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey. Right after this, you're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, here we are. Our last break of the day on this Tuesday. It's been a good day. Yes, until thanks to out. all Uncle our Steve listeners. Steve don't want to talk to me if I'm in a sickle cell crisis. It was good till the end. <laughs> so I find out. Well, you know, hey, that's not what I'm here for. <laughs> I'm here for encouragement and uplifting and enlightenment. You Motivation. From the dark side. I really don't. I'm not that guy. So you don't encourage and uplift if he's sick? Do no. you hear your motivational speaker, uh-uh. Steve? What are you saying? I know. If he's not hearing me. It's okay. He's okay. on the okay. phone. No, yeah. no, no, no. Okay, let me give y'all a reenactment of how it went. Hey, Junior, what's going on with you, man? Hey, uh, how you doing? Okay, cool. He don't want to hear that right now. <laughs> you hung up the phone. Yeah. See, I, what I can't have you do is steal my joy. <laughs> I this call, is about you. I told you that. It's I call to you. uplift and motivate. Now, you're trying to bring me down. <laughs> oh, it's not about you. <laughs> so I'm not having a crisis. But what you're not finna do is put me <laughs> in the crisis. That's not what you're finna do to me. Yeah. Let that get hey, Junior, day. how you doing, man? How everything going on? Were you hanging in there, soldier? No. I'm, I'm, He's I'm, in I'm pain. Okay. Click. Let me get up out of here. This ain't the time. Oh, sure you you, get you, I can't, you can't get help it because... nobody that don't want help. Oh, Listen to me. Exactly. I, I'm, I'm in the motivation really of business. It. If yeah, you yeah. don't want to hear it today, then huh. just do like he did. Let me know this ain't what you want to hear today. If you want to wallow in it, then let me let you wallow in it. When you feel better, you call me. <laughs> yeah. Come on, just do the closing remarks, man. <laughs> okay. Really, Junior? Yeah, I can't do him no All more. Right, man, just, this uh, is a shame. Trying to tell you, you know. <laughs> hey, listen, my closing remarks is uh, pretty much is, it's on point. It's just to keep reminding people to stay on the upside, man. Stay on the upside, y'all. I'm telling you, these are lessons that I've had to learn in my life. You know, I was talking with the morning crew the other morning when we first got back on the air. We hadn't talked to each other since the break. And we were all talking about everything and, you know, the uproar and everything that's out on the Internet and all this stuff. And you know what we all had a general consensus was when I said, you know what, man, I'm just going to stay on the wall. I'm not coming down off the wall to address nonsense. I'm not coming down off where God has placed me to get on the lower level. And I'm reminding everybody, listen, y'all, as you go through your day, remember this. You are in the pursuit of success and happiness, all of you. Everybody I know wants those two things in life, to be successful and to be happy. And in your pursuit of that, you have to remember that the devil has one job. And that is to rob you of your destiny. That is the one job of the devil. He don't care how he do it. And he will try and attempt it by any means necessary. Your job is to be aware of that. Be aware. Do you know that the devil got imps working for him 24-7? That they are on call? 
and they ain't got no problem doing his bidding. And man, they just show up when you least expect it. You could be going on with your life and then here comes something. And you know what you really got to be aware of, people? Don't let somebody, if you have a person in your life that's constantly bringing up your past, to bring it up as current news, to remind you of what you did or what you were, and it has nothing to do with who you are and where you are going, erase that person from your life. You don't need it. Stay on the wall. Listen to me, everybody makes mistakes. There's not a living soul. Be careful of people who are so eager to point out everybody's mistakes, but ain't none of them fingers pointing at they self. Who is this? Ye who without sin cast the first stone. Throw it. But it's amazing how they throw these rocks and don't and and, and ain't none supposed to come at them. Y'all, listen to me. Uncle Steven learned a lot. You know what I told my team at the beginning of the year? I'm battle tested. I'm battle tested, man. I've been through it so many times on so many levels. I done got accustomed to it. And you know the one thing I've learned? That what God has for you, do you know there's nothing nobody can do about that? Do you know that if God is moving you in a certain place and a certain level, do you know that there's nothing that a hater can do? Nothing unless you stop, climb down off the wall and address it. See, when people, when you're up at a diff, at a certain level, as many of you are, this is why you have haters. If you have a hater, it's because you're above somebody. <laughs> know that. That's why you have a hater. But for them to throw their rock at you, they got to throw up. Even if the rock hits you from throwing from the lower position, it don't hurt. But if you climb down off the wall and you get on the same level as them and they throw that rock at you, that one can hurt you because you've lowered yourself to their level. Stay on the wall, y'all. Stay on the wall. Where God has placed you, don't let no man talk you off your position. And don't let nobody bring up the past to keep reminding you of what you were and what you used to do. Because that has nothing to do with who you are and where you are going. God is in the blessing business. I'm open for all of them. I'm looking for a whole lot more in 2024. Those are my closing remarks. Y'all stay with it, y'all. Have a good one. God will. We'll see y'all tomorrow. Peace. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 